YouTube has a real far right problem and the only solution is more left wing content and creators. Hey everybody, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Today I want to talk a bit about this New York Times piece that just came out talking about Caleb Kane, a young man who a few years ago fell down the right wing rabbit hole at YouTube and almost never got out. The reality is, is that he was looking for a solution to the world's problems and to his own problems and he found it on YouTube, supposedly, in some of the far-right content that brought him to misogynistic and racist and homophobic worldviews. And it was very difficult for him to get out. Now, thankfully he did, but the reality is, is that for all the Caleb Keynes that go down the rabbit hole, few ever get out. And some of them even become rather dangerous people who do dangerous things and hateful things and violent things, you know, as a result of some of the ideologies they're being infused with on this platform. So I've been asking myself, and many others have been asking themselves, what's the solution here? Now certainly some of these truly heinous channels, they should be banned. They should be banned, not only demonetized, but banned from the platform because they bring truly hateful views that clearly violate, you know, the terms and conditions. And yet, you know, because they're popular, YouTube has shown a reluctance to ban them. There's been recent discussions on Twitter about, you know, accusations of hypocrisy and favoritism by the platform as it targets you know, voices against homophobia and racism, but not always those actual homophobic and racist voices. That's one big factor. We can't deal with that today. But one thing we can do, one thing I think we can all pitch in on, is to bring more left-wing voices and creators to this platform. Look, one of the realities about how the right is so strong on YouTube is they formed a real ecosystem. It's more than a community. It's, a, it's an ecosystem of, of creators that don't all believe the exact same thing, but have a general right-wing viewpoint going from the center-right to the rather you know, extreme right that sort of create linkages through algorithms to one another so that you can start on a relatively benign source and within a few suggested videos and a few clicks find yourself in rather troubling right-wing waters. And this is exacerbated by the fact that often these people collaborate with one another. As I note, they use similar keywords and, 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 and titles, and they, and they have similar guests on, and they have a general you know, demeanor that's quite similar. And as such, their viewers tend to travel the carousel, if you will. They go around and around, and they hit Jordan Peterson, but he just drags them to other people, or other people you know, have connections to Jordan Peterson. And these sorts of things are very common. And it's one of the ways the right-wing rabbit hole on YouTube perpetuates itself. And so the left really needs this. And it sort of started. If anyone here follows my content, you might have seen it being shared to places like BreadTube on Reddit, which is a great community, although very small still, that kind of collects and talks about and shares and promotes left-wing content on YouTube. And there are a few big BreadTubers. HBomb and ContraPoints and PhilosophyTube. There are others, of course, as well. I, I can't spend all day naming them. Those are three of the biggest. But they're still relatively small, you know, in comparison to some of the biggest far-right voices on this platform. And while there are a few, you know, large and growing bread tubers, left tubers, if you will, the far-right has big channels and many, many respectably sized channels that rival HBOM and ContraPoints and PhilosophyTube so that they have this real ecosystem and sort of community that exists that allows for a greater algorithmic connection of videos on this platform. And so the left needs to build these connections up. And I have to say that in Canada specifically, we really have an issue with this. There are very few progressive, left-leaning, you know, anti-capitalist, depending on whatever you want to call us, there are very few left-leaning YouTubers that cover Canadian politics. David Dole is one of the biggest. He's probably the biggest. He's got about 200,000 subscribers, but he mostly focuses on American politics from a left-wing perspective, from a progressive perspective, but he's nonetheless focused largely on American politics. I certainly talk about American politics on this channel too, but with a stronger focus on Canada. And I'm a relatively rare example. So it's sort of like being on an island. There's not a lot of content to algorithmically connect to. There's not as many people to collaborate with. There's not as many people to build that sort of ecosystem around. And so on a more extreme scale to the bread tubers, the Canadian left YouTube scene is very small. And it needs that kind of support 
that need that, that comes from increased viewership and increased content being created and what have you. And that's where we're at. This is one of the reasons I started this channel. For those who knew me before YouTube, you know I'm a Canadian historian. I have a PhD in history from Queen's University in Kingston. I've written books, I've written articles, I've been in the media, I've been in the Washington Post, I've been in the Globe and Mail, I've been in McLean's, I've been on the CBC and the CTV, I've been on some American news sources as well. And in general, that media profile is great, but I feel like I don't have my definitive personal voice there where I can really share my true values and my true opinions in an unfiltered sense. And I can do that here. And I think it's important to do that here because it's a voice we're not getting. We're not getting on YouTube a democratic socialist voice covering Canadian politics and Canadian labor issues and those sorts of things. But it's hard doing it on your own. And I think it makes it really difficult to do what Natalie Wynn at ContraPoints has talked about, this algorithmic hacking. Building these kind of keyword searches and terms and approaches that allow you to compete with the right-wing voices on the topics they cover. To not just build our own bubble, but to in a sense pop theirs by going into their topics and tearing them down. Going into topics about white supremacy and conspiracy theories and misogyny and homophobia and challenging those views directly. And I haven't done just that on this channel. I also cover you know, the limitations of neoliberal capitalism on this channel. But the reality is, is that when you build a community of major creators, it makes all of that so much easier. So I have a piece coming out in Ricochet. It's a left-wing Canadian news site that talks about labor and indigenous issues and, and climate issues from a definitively progressive perspective. I've written for them before. They're fantastic. They do great journalism. They've actually just launched a recent project to cover the far right in Canada. And I've written a piece for them. It should be coming out this week. And it's about how we need to build a left-wing YouTube community covering Canadian politics and culture and, you know, just the country more broadly. We need that. We need it extremely urgently because we need to have the heftiness. We need to build that ecosystem. We need that ability to collaborate with one another and to cover the same issues and to allow people who stumble on YouTube to find our content and not just content by Ben Shapiro and others like him. As it stands, you'll see on my videos sometimes that this suggested video is by Ben Shapiro or somebody on the far right. And that's only happening because those videos are so successful at playing the YouTube algorithm. And we need to do the same. We need to build that content individually and as a group. So I'm asking for a couple things. First, and least important, I'd love for you to continue watching and sharing my content. When you do so, it helps to spread the message that there are different voices on YouTube. It's not all, you know, lifestyle content, which is great, and far-right, you know, xenophobia and racism and, and homophobia and misogyny, which is not great. It's not just those two things. There are progressive left-leaning voices on this platform covering Canadian politics, and they offer an important perspective. And of course, related to that, you can support me on Patreon, which helps me to produce more content, but also improves the quality of the content. But I'm not what matters here. This isn't about me. This is about you. And I'm asking this, very personally, to all my viewers, new people and people who have been watching me since the beginning. If you've ever had the urge, the inclination to make YouTube videos, but you've been on the edge and you've never started, whether it's because you were nervous or whether it's because, you know, you, just, you'll, you'll, you put it off till next week and the week after and the week after that, no matter what, whatever the reason, I want you to give it a shot. I want you to create your content. It doesn't have to be strictly on politics like my channel is, but I want you to bring a progressive voice to this platform to challenge racism and homophobia and sexism and all of the sorts of things that pollute our discourse on this great platform. I want you to do that. Because if you do that, you're going to help create that ecosystem to shift the balance in a progressive direction. And I also have to say that however much I'd like to think so, However much you might fool yourself into thinking personally from time to time, I'm not the arbiter on what's right and wrong on Canadian progressive politics. I'm not. I'm just one guy. I'd like to think I bring an informed perspective. And I'd like to think you guys do too. But I know that I don't represent the diversity of thought and the diversity of identity 
on Canadian politics and left politics. And so if you bring that perspective, whether it's to agree with me or challenge me, it will make for a better discourse. And that's all we can really ask for. So guys, that's where we're at. YouTube has a real right-wing problem. And Canada, in some ways, has exported some of the worst alt-right figures on our internet. We've sort of taken Lauren Southern and Faith Goldie and Stephen Molyneux and Jordan Peterson and others and have said, this is what represents Canadian YouTube, folks, at least on the political side. And it doesn't have to be that way. We can create good content. We can create thoughtful content. My content's not funny, but we can create funny content and entertaining content and, 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 and memeable content. We can do that as a group, collectively, and we can share each other's content, but we need to do that together. So let's start. Please keep sharing my content, keep watching my content, consider supporting me on Patreon, but more important here, if you have any urge to create, please do so. Canada's got some great ideas out there. We have a real burgeoning left-wing podcast scene. Can't name them all, but there's there's really there's there's at least, you know, approaching a dozen really good left-wing podcasts. But those ideas they're not coming to YouTube, at least not yet. And you can help bring them here. So please, consider doing that. And if you do, I know we can start pushing back against the alt-right tide and that maybe the next Caleb Kane, he won't fall down that rabbit hole at all and we'll all be better for it.